Good afternoon. This meeting is recorded. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today for our second of three information sessions for the Senior College at Bridgewater State University. My name is Jennifer Reed, and I am the director of um, professional corporate and community education and also the director of the senior college. So we're really excited to have so many of our uh, great faculty on the Zoom with us today and to talk a little bit more in depth about their courses. Um, so we do have the closed captioning on. Um, I can't get the audio to come on. Oops, I'm gonna go ahead and mute all. So if folks could just stay on mute, um, if you can't hear us, I think that's probably a technical thing on your end. Maybe check the volume on your computer or log out or log back in perhaps, um, but we will go ahead and keep everyone on mute. Um, and Darlene also, if you hear any background noise, if you could just hit that mute all button as well, um, that's helpful. So I will go over the format for today's event. I will give some brief comments um, and just sort of information about senior college and how it works. Um, while I'm doing my um, chat, if um, you could do me a favor and write in the chat um, your name, where you're from, and the thing you're looking forward to most coming this spring or summer. So maybe something that you look forward to do or something fun that you do and you can only do in the nice weather if you could um, write that in the chat. So again, your name, where you're from and what you're looking forward to most when the good weather starts coming back. Um, okay, so a few things um, I wanted to explain to all of you is, um, yep, I will James, I'll definitely do that. Um, I wanted to, uh, I feel like there's something I'm forgetting to see. Is the chat working? Chat. Okay, sorry, I wasn't seeing the chat. Um, okay, good, there we go. Um, so what is senior college? Oh, 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 first off, can I just get a wave if you are brand new to senior college and you're not a member? Uh, okay, John, welcome, welcome, James. I see a couple of our instructors. Uh, keep waving just because I'm scrolling through the screens. Okay, so I see so many familiar faces. So I'm, I'm going to keep it light on the introduction because I certainly, you know, I know that a lot of you are already members and you're really here at this event to just hear from the instructor. So I'm going to keep, I'm going to kind of go fast forward through my normal spiel because it doesn't look like there's any uh, folks here that are, um, you know, potential um, new members. So um, as you all know, Senior College is a dynamic learning community. We offer non-credit courses for folks over age 50. And uh, we have most of our members are in their 60s and 70s and 80s. Um, senior College is free if you are over 90. So um, if you know of anyone, if you have a neighbor, friend, relative who's over 90, please send them my way, shoot me an email, tell me how to reach out to them and I will go ahead and reach out to them because we'd love to have people in that category um, for sure to be a part of our community. We haven't ever had anyone over 90. I think 89 was the oldest member we've had. Um, we uh, were created as a way for the university to be more responsive and engaged with this important community of older adults. So that's why we're here. We're fully supported by the university, um, by our president, Fred Clark, and our provost. So we're here because it's important to the university. I think I've mentioned um, to some of you in the past that we are working on efforts to become an age-friendly university, which is a like national designation that we um, can uh, apply for. So we're going through that process now. Um, we're looking to create spaces and opportunities for intergenerational learning. And we do that um, to some degree already in a lot of spaces. I know that various departments at the university work closely with the Bridgewater Senior Center and the library. Um, so we're looking to just grow and build on that um, opportunity because that's important to all of us here um, at the BSU campus. And so we're just 
looking to have you, uh, our members, get access to our great faculty. We learn so much in the classroom and outside of the classroom here at the university. And this is such a great way for people to gain access to um, uh, the learning that happens in the classroom through instructors. They teach about, our faculty teach about things that they teach about in their regular undergraduate and graduate cl classes, but it's also an opportunity for our instructors to teach about things that are maybe outside of their wheelhouse or something that they have a particular passion for. And so I think you'll see that that can be a really fun way to get to know our great faculty. Um, we have this semester, I think about 30 courses and many of them are brand new. We worked really hard this semester to bring back your uh, the most popular instructors. When, I, when someone is, when an instructor is popular, I can tell because I get emails from all of you. They're, you know, the, the notes that we get about them and their um, evaluations are glowing and people will say, you know, I could listen to so-and-so, you know, talk about paint drying and I would come to every class that she offers. So we brought back our most popular instructors and then we worked really hard to bring in new instructors with brand new content. So we have many, many brand new courses that we're really excited about. Um, so you can check out our course catalog and our schedule at a glance, which is posted on our website. And I'll put our website right here in the chat. So um, we also redesigned our website, uh, not our website, our um, course catalog. We made it a more comprehensive document. So I would encourage you to check that out. It can be um, uploaded or downloaded right from our website, which is pasted right there in the chat. We also have a number of benefits to membership. So the price is $85. It includes unlimited amount. You can take any uh, as many classes as you like. You can take every single class that we offer for $85. I don't know of any other lifelong learning program that has this kind of structure. Um, most of the other lifelong learning programs at other places that I'm aware of have it where you pay by class or you pay a membership fee and you pay by class or you pay a membership fee, but you can only take a couple classes. Um, so we are very unique in the format that we have. Um, is regarding the pay structure. So I encourage you to take advantage of it. You can enroll in a bunch of classes and if something doesn't appeal to you and you're not enjoying it, then you can just stop going to that class. It's really easy. No one's offended. No one's going to say, you know, ask where you were. Um, it's really an open enrollment format. So please take advantage of that. We also have um, a uh, benefit to your membership where you can, um, you can enjoy all the benefits of being a Bridgewater student. So if you happen to live local to the area, you can get a parking pass for free. You can get um, what's called a connect card, which is a student ID card and, you know, go take advantage of library services or technical services. Um, so there's a number of the, the, the fitness center. I mean, the people that take advantage of that, I mean, that in and of itself is worth, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So if you're local and you're interested in exploring our campus more um, after you join, stay tuned for more information about that. Um, I'll send you some specific instructions on how you can get um, your sticker and your card and all that stuff. Um, we also offer recordings of a lot of our classes, so it's up to the instructor, of course, and, you know, as you can imagine, sometimes, sometimes the discussions don't really um, make sense to be recorded if you're, you know, depending on the topic, but a lot of our classes are recorded and we offer that as a benefit. Again, no other program offers recording of classes. Um, so, and then when you have access as a member to a video on demand library, um, that's, you know, I know a lot of you take advantage of. So I would encourage you to check that out if you're a member or are thinking about becoming a member. Um, and finally, I would say, how do you register? You sign up via our website as a, um, as a big bureaucratic institution. Of course, we don't make it entirely easy. It's easy if you were a member this past fall, then you can just skip to step two and make your registration payment. Um, and it's pretty easy if that's your case. If you're brand new to senior college, then you do have to go ahead and do steps one, two, and three, and they're listed on our website. Um, 
Darlene, just make sure you're letting people in the room. I'm, I'm letting some people in. Um, so if you have any questions about registration, you can email Darlene Marks or myself. You probably already have a thousand emails from me in your box. So you can just reply to one of those and I'd be happy to help walk you through the process. Um, also, we record our, these events. We have a couple events coming up that you might want to consider attending. We have another event just like this, the third one in the series that will be on Wednesday, February 9th at 10 a.m. And then we have a couple of events coming up with the Massachusetts, uh, the Alzheimer's Association of Massachusetts in New Hampshire, one tomorrow um, that will be covering a new, the new advances in Alzheimer's treatment. That's actually really timely. There's like a brand new medication that has been, that's coming out or is out. Um, so if you're interested in that, please attend that event tomorrow. Again, you can sign up on our website. These, these events are free and open to the public. Okay, that's a lot of me talking. So now let's get to the real good part. Oh, wait, before I stop. So um, if you're an, uh, if you are a member of senior college and you're enjoying your time with us, I would just ask you to help us spread the word. We have zero um, marketing budget for this program. So we really rely on our members to help us spread the word. So you know, I can, I, I can send you a one page flyer. So if you, you know, can print the flyer and bring it to your local senior center or to your, you know, your knitting club or whatever, um, or you could email it out to your friends and family in the town you live in. Um, that would be great. Again, if you need the one page flyer, let me know and I can send it to you. Um, but even if you could just ask one person, you know, a friend, a family member, a neighbor, um, tell them about a class that you experienced and you enjoyed, and then maybe send them the links to the website. That's really how we're um, building our program is by the word of mouth. So I just appreciate that so much. And for those of you that already do that, thank you. Um, keep them coming. And we're happy to help, you know, demystify what learning on Zoom means and all those things. Um, I also wanted to mention, too, that we are planning on coming back in person this semester. Of course, this is all dependent upon, you know, the current public health, you know, protocols at the moment. But starting in mid-March, we plan on offering courses in person at the Bridgewater Public Library, um, the Center for Active Living in Plymouth, and we have, I think, one course planned at the at BSU Attleboro. So those classes um, hopefully will take place. We'll probably making, be making the decision on whether or not they're, they will be either virtual or in person, maybe like a week or two before. We really wanna give them every chance to run because we know that many of you enjoy that in-person experience. Um, if for some reason they, they can't run due to um, you know, what's going on with COVID, then they will just automatically be transferred to a Zoom format at the same date, same times. So don't sign up for them unless you're planning on going in person because we'll use that sign up uh, registration form as um, a gauge to know how many people are in those classes. And then if we do go virtual, of course, then you can all sign up. Um, if you weren't planning on attending it in person. Okay, I'm going to stop speaking now. The rest of this event will be us giving instructors an opportunity to share a little bit. Um, first, if you could just tell us a little bit about yourselves, who you are and what you do, and maybe what your interests or your scholarship or your academic life or professional life is about. And then if you could tell us perhaps one or two things that participants can hope to learn in your course. Um, and I will remind instructors, if for some reason you need to get going, just send me a private chat and I'll have you speak um, earlier rather than later. And also to the instructors, you don't necessarily need to stay for the rest of the event either. Um, so I understand you're busy. So if you wanna hop off, you can do that. If you have a specific question for the instructor, put it in the chat and then I can ask him or her when they're done speaking. Um, and then at the end, we'll just open it up for general questions. Okay, um, let's see. So uh, let's get started um, this morning. I see um, James Hayes Bohannon was the first instructor I saw on the screen. So with that, James, I will hand it over to you. You should be able to share your screen. And don't forget to unmute yourself too. 
Okay. Um, good morning. Af afternoon, everybody. Um, and uh, I am James Hayes Bohannon. And I uh, have been here at Bridgewater State for uh, 24 and a half years. I'm sitting in my kid's room. Uh, he was born right as I arrived and my wife, Pamela, the librarian arrived. She's also part of senior college sometimes. Um, we have been at Bridgewater since 1997. I was hired to teach environmental geography and the geography of Latin America. Coffee started becoming kind of an example in both of those classes pretty early on. Uh, I had gotten through undergrad and grad school on some of the terrible coffees of the world, like Taster's Choice and chock full of nuts and I had nothing I knew nothing about coffee just it got me Folgers even uh, got us through as students but after visiting here I had um, somebody connected me to uh, a guy named Rodney North at Equal Exchange Coffee which is a great company very near campus here um, and uh, he came and just talked to my class and that increased in 1999 and that started to increase my interest in coffee and it, it sort of took over my life so I'm my, a lot of people think that coffee is the only thing I study, but I do teach classes on land protection, environmental policy, cultural geography, and things like that. But coffee is a great way for me to connect to a lot of ideas about geography. And I did a senior college, my first senior college course back in the fall was just all about coffee. And some of the feedback we got from that suggested that there would be an interest in me talking about um, chocolate and tea as well. I have here on my, just my little overview screen here, um, just a little representation of these three crops. Um, cacao is the fruit from which chocolate is made. Coffee is a fruit also, and uh, tea is a, is a shrub. Botanically, they have very little in common. Uh, but they do have a lot in common geographically. They grow in very specific locations. They have um, labor that is treated badly. Uh, in many cases, they have a very interesting relationship to climate change, both on the protection side and on the vulnerability side. And um, I've just found it fascinating to learn a bit about uh, chocolate and tea in recent years. So uh, in my class, I've actually been to some chocolate farms or more commonly coffee farms that are diversifying back into chocolate. Chocolate began in the Americas and is mainly grown in Africa. Coffee began in Africa and is mainly grown in the Americas. Tea began in Asia and is mainly grown in Asia, um, but a little bit in Africa. There are also a lot of things called tea that aren't really tea. So we'll have a whole session on, is this really tea or is this something that just behaves like tea? you'll know the difference between orthodox tea and all of the things that are enjoyed like tea. And we will talk about the implications for climate, um, especially in the tea industry. Um, I will go, like I said, I did the whole senior college program on coffee back in the fall. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on coffee in this class, but I am going to spend some time at the beginning um, when I talk about museums dedicated to all of these crops, uh, because we've been asked to help um, some people in Cape Verde develop a coffee museum for Cape Verde. So my honors students this semester are working on that. So I'm really digging into a lot of museums on these beverages all over, all around the world. And if you've heard the term sugars and spice and everything nice, that's how we'll do our last session. We will talk about the geographies of some other very specialized crops that we tend to bring across great distance, like sugar, like spices. Um, I don't know nearly as much about those as I do coffee, but this is all about exploration for me, and I hope you'll come along. Um, and since Jen mentioned in-person learning, uh, this will be, of, of course, fully online because it's starting a bit earlier, but towards the end of the semester, my students hopefully we'll be putting on an in-person coffee tasting and I'll be sure to let everybody in senior college know that'll be open to the public if we're able to have it uh, as late in the semester as we can have it. And um, I think that's all I have unless there are questions. James, thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to mention that your course um, starts Monday, February 28th and it starts at 9.30 in the morning till 10-ish. Um, and we're just so thrilled to have you back by popular demand. Um, I appreciate so much your willingness to, um, I think 
people find in your courses that you put in a lot of time and effort, in, especially into the organization of the class materials. Um, I know you do a Google site specifically for your class where people can readily access the notes and the materials and stuff. And I know that our folks appreciate that. So, and so do I, I know people really like that. Um, thank so you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Glad to be back. Okay, so um, I put I'll put the in the note in the chat here um, who's up next. So up next we have um, Mike Krizanik. Um, Dr. Krizanik has been with us since the very inception of Senior College in the fall of 2019, which seems like it was like I don't know 30 years ago at this point. Um, and he was uh, one of our first in-person instructors, or when we were a fully in-person program. And he's also taught via Zoom. Um, so, Mike, I'll turn it over to you, and we're curious to hear about what you'll be teaching with us this semester. Okay, thanks, Jen. I appreciate it, and I'm uh, looking forward to uh, uh, the course that I've uh, presented here. And I see a, a number of uh, um, familiar faces on the uh, on the screen there, so I'm I'm happy to see uh, all of the uh, participants who have who have been involved in the courses that I've taught here. Uh, in the uh, in the senior college, most of them in the area of American government and American politics. The uh, uh, of course that I'll be teaching, and this is a little bit later in the in the program, uh, uh, April twenty sixth to June second, I believe, are the uh, are are the dates. And Jen is shaking her head uh, head yes. Um, my background is I was the uh, a member of the political science department, the chair for a number of years, and helped develop the. Uh, Masters of Public Administration program, of which Jen was our one of our prize students uh, uh, as, as well. Uh, then I moved on to uh, work on uh, the uh, uh, Minick Institute, which is the uh, global uh, component of Bridgewater State's involvement. And I was the executive director there, but I am now kind of retired, I guess you could say. Uh, you can't say I'm completely retired because I'm here speaking to you and, and getting involved in the senior college and a couple of other things with regard to uh, uh, the Mandela program, which is the African Scholars Program as, as well. Now, the, uh, uh, the course, I, I, I don't have anything to put up there because uh, uh, the uh, crisis uh, in American government uh, and, and uh, the failing of democracy are things that are not easily put up on uh, in terms of the screen. But we will be doing that as we as we move move forward. Um, uh, what we're seeing now, unfortunately, uh, in the United States is a, is a very troubled situation. Um, I'm going to try to be fair on all sides here and balance, as they say, on the Fox Network, uh, and and not zero in on one particular individual or one particular political party. But what I'm going to be discussing uh, with with you, and uh, hopefully this becomes a conversation. Uh, rather than just a one-way pre presentation, are the are the challenges that this country faces in the current uh, the current political uh, set of circumstances and and conditions? Uh, there are a number of challenges that this country faces, uh, whether it's uh, leadership, whether it's institutions, whether it's public policy, whether it's public opinion. Uh, there are there are a number of areas that we'll be looking at uh, that point to some great challenges that the United States faces that we we face as uh, as well. Certainly, we are involved at this present time with a great deal of uh, uh, internal division and polarization, whether it is Democrat versus Republican, whether it is North versus South, whether it is rural versus urban, uh, whether it is a, a whole range of policy differences. We're going to take a look at those divisions and see how they contribute to this current crisis that, I, that I'm uh, going to be talking about. One of the other things that's probably most disturbing is the level of extremism that we are facing in this country, uh, whether it is a right wing or left wing, whether it is white supremacy or whether it is the so called woke uh, situation or the cancel culture. Uh, there are uh, there are a number of uh, examples in which we uh, are, are facing a great deal of extremism. Uh, and this extremism is, is so significant that uh, it does pose a danger to a democracy. Uh, and it is a, certainly a component of the crisis that we face as a, uh, as a nation. Uh, we're gonna be here talking uh, in uh, uh, April, May, and, and the early part of June, but certainly the 2022 midterm elections, and it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a long way away, but the 2024 
national presidential and, and, uh, and congressional elections are very, very critical to the future of this country and to uh, uh, respond to the crisis that we face. Uh, more and more, there are examples that this would be a contested elections, uh, not only in terms of who wins, but uh, how votes are going to be taken, who gets to vote, who doesn't, doesn't get to vote, uh, and, and how people are going to respond to uh, the, uh, uh, the results of the 2022 midterm elections, uh, in which all, all the members of the House are up and uh, one third of the Senate are up. And then, of course, 2024 presidential election. We don't know who those candidates are going to be, but certainly uh, it will be a major test of our resilience as a nation to uh, achieve uh, some finality of who wins and who does not win and, and where the country is going to be going under that person's uh, leadership. One of the things that's probably most disturbing to many people is that we see a, a number of scenarios of so-called decline or crisis in this country. Some have even talked about the fact that there could be some kind of civil war, not necessarily North versus South or blue coats versus uh, uh, <clears throat> gray coats, but uh, perhaps on a state level, a good deal of, of uh, challenges to existing leadership and existing institutions. Unfortunately, violence is, is not to be uh, ruled out. Uh, uh, threats against individuals who are in positions of prominence. Uh, already, um, our U.S. attorney, uh, Rachel Rollins, has asked for federal protection because she feels endangered. Uh, the district attorney who runs Fulton County in Georgia, uh, where there is a challenge to President, former President Trump, she has asked for protection. Uh, and there was a plot against the governor of Michigan. Uh, and, and we can go on and on in which we see examples of, uh, of uh, uh, a great deal of not only controversy, but challenges, physical challenges or violent challenges to the people in, uh, in, uh, uh, in prominence, uh, political leaders, governmental leaders, uh, people who run elections uh, and the like. We're going to try to finish up uh, and, and try to put a hopeful spin on this. Uh, and not just because I want to do that, but I, I, Americans are always resilient and think positively about the future. And I'm going to ask you, one of our homework assignments going to be as we go to the end, what can be done? What can you and I, as citizens of this country, uh, try to make things better politically and governmentally? Uh, we always zero in on the economy and inflation and shortages, uh, which are real, but also the, this is a much more serious a challenge to the, uh, to the United States about our government, about our democracy, about our way of life, about how we choose our leaders, of how we make decisions. Uh, and so these are, uh, th these are uh, issues that I think all of us will have to talk about. Uh, and uh, it'll be my responsibility to work with you and uh, not only talk about some of these scenarios which are dangerous, but also talk about ways in which we can improve life here in, uh, in this country, political life, governmental life. So I'll leave it at that and uh, looking forward to uh, working with you. And, uh, um, and of course, as I say, I'll be at the uh, Bridgewater Public Library. Hopefully by April 26th, we will have uh, a much more open uh, and normal way of living. Uh, and so uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing you, uh, seeing you then. And Thank that's you. it, Jen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, um, Mike. I appreciate it. You have really um, guided us through the last couple of years with all the courses that you've offered. And I know that you will continue to do that in this class. Um, I, I speak, you know, personally, it's, I feel lucky to have a political science scientist of your um, knowledge and scholarship to be able to help us disseminate things that can be scary and confusing and um, you know, have the safe space by which we can analyze what's going on in our country. So thank you for coming back. We're excited that you'll be able to deliver, deliver this class in person at the Bridgewater Public Library. We know that we've um, been able to do that in the past and we're hoping we'll be able to do that this coming April. Again, your class is on Tuesday mornings, 9, 10 to 10.30, um, not starting till April 26th, but we'll look forward to seeing you then. I'm looking forward to it. And unfortunately, the topic this time is uh, 
uh, not only serious, but uh, kind of depressing in a way. I'm not saying uh, there aren't solutions to what we have to face, but this is a, a, a serious matter that uh, has long-term implications for the way we live as a country and the way we live as citizens of democracy. So we'll try to iron things out and, and, and hopefully try to come to some resolution of how we can in, improve the democratic climate here in the United States. So I'll leave it at that. Excellent, thank you so much. I appreciate you being here with us today. Okay, so up next we have um, John Sullivan, and I've actually never met John in, in um, you know, other than speaking over email and on the phone. So welcome, John. Oh, oops, I'll turn it over to you. I assume you're still here. Is John here? Hold on, let me look at the gallery. Oh, maybe, I, oh, John Sullivan, I see you. Uh, go ahead and unmute yourself, John. You're, you're muted, John. Still muted. Still on mute. Here you go. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I got recommended to you by Beth Hatfield at the Plymouth Senior Center. I used to take classes there and um, I talked to her one day and um, I've been teaching, teaching senior center classes since 2016 in Duxbury and in Marshfield and also Pembroke. I just did one last fall. I'm a retired teacher from the Duxbury High School. I retired in 2010. I taught 38 years of advanced placement history, advanced placement psychology. I taught a lot of psychology at Cape Cod, Massasoit, Quincy College. Um, what I did was I was asked to do senior center classes by a mother of a former student. And uh, actually I wasn't attempting to do that, but she stopped me in the Roach Brothers in Marshfield. And uh, I said, well, why don't you contact me in the winter? And uh, yeah, I brushed her off essentially. And she did. She said, can you come up with something? So I did. I did a course for six weeks on the presidents after World War II. And the reason I picked that is I enjoyed that period when I was teaching AP history. So that was the beginning. And what I've done, I've taught 14 different courses since then in Marshfield, Duxbury. What I've done is I sit in my den and if I'm, whenever I'm reading, I come up with ideas for a course. And then I write them up and I give them to the senior center managers. And if they choose to do it, I do it. Um, I'll give you guys a couple examples. Right now I'm finishing up a course in 1968 in Marshfield. And in Duxbury in the spring, I'm gonna be doing a course on the other president's men, advisors to presidents, starting with Wilson, Colonel House. Um, the course I'm trying to do with you at Bridgewater is a course I developed last winter and taught at both Duxbury and Marshfield. It's called American Political Process in the Movies. And what I did was pick four movies that I really enjoyed and put them in the form of a course in sequence. And um, all of these movies except one can be seen on YouTube. I created discussion questions for each film. Each film is preceded by the discussion questions for the week we're actually going to do the film. And um, I'll give you the quick titles of the films. I'm sure you're all familiar with many of these. The Best Man, which talks about the uh, nomination for president. Advising Consent deals with a president trying to get a nominee through the Senate. Seven Days in May. Seven Days in May is very appropriate for the period we're going through at this time. I don't want to say too much about that because I save that for the class. 
And then a film I discovered called Gabriel Over the White House, a film from 1933. And it's a very interesting film. Um, Walter Houston is the president in the film. And um, it's very, it, it makes a good ending to the course, actually, even though it's very old. Um, my first class, I deal with an introduction. I ask a series of questions, and hand them out to the students. And uh, we discuss what's coming ahead, what their ideas are about the films, if they've known the films. And then my last class is a summary where we discuss all of the things we saw and each student submits their response to what we saw. I have a lot of discussion in this class. People really um, enjoy it. I enjoy it. Uh, if I don't like what I'm gonna do, I would do it. So the 14 things I've done are topics that I enjoyed. I had a class on Jacob Rees. I had a class called Demagogues, Demagogues and Prophets that dealt with McCarthy, Father Coughlin, Huey Long. So um, that's what I've done. And uh, I hope that uh, I can do it here in Plymouth. Uh, I would only do it in person. I really don't like Zoom. I'm using it, but I don't care for Zoom for teaching. I've done it in both Marshville and Duxbury you don't really have a good contact with the student, which I think is the most important okay. part. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, we will respectfully disagree, John. You know, I, I agree. I think not everyone, you know, enjoys Zoom, but we've actually done a really nice job. And I know that the people that join our senior college because we are now primarily on Zoom, they're they're fans. So um, if it's not for you, we're we're, we totally understand that. We're, we're so psyched you've come highly recommended to be an in-person in instructor and hopefully public health protocol will allow us to. I hope so. Yeah. Hope yeah. So. Well, thank you so much. It was great for you to be here. Okay. Um, and, you know, again, if you have any questions for uh, John Sullivan, go ahead and put them in the chat. His class is uh, Thursday, starting April 28th at 2 p.m. at the Center for Active Living in Plymouth. It's called American Political Process in the Movies. Um, I just wanted to give a little bit of a, a time crunch because we still have three, four, five-ish, six instructors. So we're going to need our instructors to be a little bit more concise, just a quick one or two sentences on who you are. And then also, if you could just give a one or two things they'll learn in your class, it doesn't have to be a comprehensive, um, you know, in-depth de in details about your class. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Tracy Amaral. Tracy, welcome, Tracy. I also haven't met you face to face before. So it's so nice to be here oh, to meet you. Welcome. Hi, it's nice to meet you too. Can everybody hear me okay? We can. You sound okay. great. Okay, so I am an um, adjunct professor of English at Bristol Community College. Um, I've taught at a couple of other colleges in the area as well. And I'm a former high school English teacher. Um, so I've been doing this for a while and I primarily teach writing courses. And so um, the reason I was interested in this program is so that I could pick a topic that I was, that I'm personally interested in and kind of have a little more of that creative freedom to pick and choose materials. So um, my first love as an English teacher is literature and it's because I like people's stories and I like to learn about other people's experiences. And so the topic that I picked for this class is, um, I called it Sculpting Souls, and it's about the roles of mothers. And so I think a lot of times um, we talk about the impact that our parents have on us and how they shape us. But I was really interested in learning a little more about what actually being a mother does to the mother. So how um, their life and, um, choices, experiences, health, work, everything you can possibly imagine. How is that impacted and how does it shape and define the person who is a mother? Um, and so some of the things that I was, that we're gonna be looking at would obviously be with fiction and literature, because as I said, that's kind of my first love, but also just nonfiction articles, 
um, psychology studies that I have uh, found, things in music, TV, the media, social media, movies, just it's everywhere. So um, it's kind of like a different angle to look at, I think, to, to just sort of examine that. And I think I'm not really envisioning necessarily just people who are mothers. I do have four kids, so it's kind of a, you know, near and dear to my heart sort of thing <laughs> to think about. Um, but not just for people who are mothers, but people who are interested in thinking a little more like critically about where their mothers are and, you know, that sort of thing. And um, kind of like what the impact of the job did to them. Uh, and I am hoping that we can have some lively and engaging discussions and do a little bit of um, journaling and look at some materials together and then some suggested materials, um, you know, throughout the course of the week in between meetings. And this is a mid-March start on the Attleboro campus. I think it's 1030, my start time. I wrote it down somewhere, 1030 to 1150 starting on March 16th. So that is the scoop. Tracy, thank you so much. I, when I read your course description, I was um, so excited because these are exactly the kinds of classes that I think complement some of the things that we do or so that are more traditional. And I love that you took this creative approach to um, structuring this class. We have other great instructors from Bristol Community College. And so we're thrilled to partner with you for this class. It's a topic of great interest, I, I'm sure, to many of our members, um, both men and women alike. I'd love to see some men in your course as well. Um, <laughs> And the other thing I just wanted to say to you, though, if you ever want to do a writing class, we'd love to have you because okay. we've had a writing class in the in the past and it's always incredibly popular and I'm always looking for instructors that, you know, whether it's just a short memoir writing class or, you know, reflective writing class or whatever you would be interested in. I'll just blatantly recruit you right here today in the okay. session for that. Too. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Tracy. It was great to meet you. Thank you. You too. Oh, okay. So thank you. Let's move along and we're handing it over to now. I can't remember who we're handing it over to. Uh, James uh, Kirk Caldy. James, welcome. Okay. Everyone can hear me okay? Uh, Jim Kirk Caldy. I was, uh, spent 48 years in the Hingham Public Schools. Uh, the last 25 is the Director of Social Studies, K through 12. Never a bad day, and that's the truth. And uh, since then, I've been an adjunct at BCC, Tracy, and um, I've been enjoying that as well. Uh, my field is history, and I've uh, spent a lot of time doing AP European history workshops with teachers. Uh, I just have to mention, uh, with, you mentioned Zoom, the last workshop I did with teachers was in the Middle East a couple of weeks ago. And of course, that was on Zoom. But what I failed to realize was it's that their time. So the course began at 11 at night and ended at four in the morning. But <laughs> so that was an experience, but it was kind of fun. At least I can put that in my resume, I guess. So anyways, my course is uh, one of the things I found the most enjoyable things I did as a teacher was integrating art, art appreciation into my courses. And all my students love that. Uh, there's always something to say, something to learn. And it's a life skill, something they can take with them for the rest of their life. And I've gotten... Uh, emails from students saying that they're now in their 20s and 30s and they're enjoying going to a museum and they wanted to thank me for that. <clears throat> so this workshop, six weeks, starts with the Renaissance and will probably hopefully go up to the Impressionists. And uh, it's in the catalog so you can see the breakdown. But hopefully, um, if people sign up for more, I want to do in the fall, go from post-Impressionists up to modern art. And as you know, modern art is more ambiguous and more controversial in some cases, so we should have some good discussion about that. But my feeling and my number one goal is for someone who doesn't know a lot about art, but enjoys it, obviously. But my number one goal is I want to show you some techniques to enjoy art. And when you go to a museum with a friend, uh, have a good conversation, be able to identify the different art periods, but even more important, learn some of the tricks of the trade, shall we say. Uh, for example, uh, what's, how do you analyze a painting? Uh, what do art, artists do to uh, take you through a painting to express not just um, history, of course, and the, the political history background, but also emotion and things of this nature. Uh, what are the, some of the ways an artist used to convey messages through the arts? And so um, you'll learn some, some how to deal with certain concepts like composition and so forth and how they're used by artists. So my goal is it's all about you having more fun. 
more fun with art. And it's something, especially without COVID, hopefully you can go to a museum, know what you're looking at and have a, a, the vocabulary to explain things to your friend and have some great discussions going on about what you're seeing and so forth. So this would be a good course to take after the political science course uh, that you heard earlier, because this will certainly be more upbeat, I hope, <laughs> in some cases, not as, as important, but certainly on a more um, positive note, I hope. Uh, so basically, I want to keep it fairly short. That would be it. Um, it is a high, uh, course in person because I want to encourage a lot of discussion. And I think it just suits that the best. But of course, uh, if we go Zoom, that'll be fine, too. Thank you so much, Jim. It's so nice to finally meet you. We've been emailing for, I think, almost a year or so. And so I'm so thrilled that this is coming to fruition. We haven't had an art class yet at all in senior college, and it's a request that I've received quite a lot. So I'm thrilled um, to have you be able to deliver this class. And I know a lot of our members are looking forward to it a lot. So thank you so much for being here. Well, it's a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to it as well. Thank One you. Oh, thank you. Okay, Ron Reynolds, you're up next. And just be mindful of the time, Ron. I know you have a lot to share with us, as always. I uh, can't hear you, Ron. You're not muted, but um, maybe your mic is not on on your headset. Hey, look now. Yep, good. You're good. Okay, sorry about that. Apparently, while I was sitting here, I put my elbow on the button and shut it off. Um, I have been, throughout my en entire adult life, a teacher. I have taught for 59 years, 42 years at high school, and 17 years as a visiting prof at Bridgewater State. And... Um, I have two classes coming up this semester. The first one I gave a pitch for last week, but it's going to begin Friday morning at 10 o'clock. <laughs> Pardon me. It's called How the Earth Works, Forces in Nature. And I'm going to start out by wrapping up things that were left over from last semester. And then we'll go into forces in nature, dealing with uh, earthquakes, plate tectonics, and volcanoes. Uh, the thing I really want to talk about today is my second course, which is going to begin in March, and uh, it's on the national parks. At the time I made the proposal to Jen, I didn't realize that PBS would be rebroadcasting the series on the national parks. But about 25 years ago, an opportunity came up where my son graduated from college, and we decided to take a trip to the Grand Canyon. And it was so much fun. My wife said, you guys how to do that again. So the next year we did, and we did this for a few years. And then the other son graduated from college and the three of us have ended up traveling uh, largely throughout the uh, Western United States. And we've been interested primarily in geologic features and historical things. And um, we have built most of our vacations around facilities run by the National Park Service. And if you look behind me here, uh, this is one of the national parks we're going to visit. Um, this is one of my favorite parks, Zion, in the southwestern Utah. And we'll be looking at a lot of the major parks like Yellowstone and Yosemite. Yellowstone, I think, is a crowning jewel of the park system. But there are numerous other parks that are less visited and in many respects more fun because of the lack of crowding. And as we go through the different parks, I want to acquaint you with what's there. Uh, talk about, uh, of course, many of us are senior citizens, um, access. And I know now some of the things I've done in the past, such as when I took this picture behind me, it involved a strenuous hike. And uh, after my recent heart attack, <laughs> I know I can't do that kind of thing anymore. But uh, I think this will be important to people. We'll talk about where to stay, where to eat. But most of all, I want to give a photographic tour of many of the national parks. Uh, and as I said, mostly the major parks like Yellowstone and Yosemite, but also look at some of the more obscure things like the Manzanar historical site, um, where the, uh, many of the Japanese Americans were interred during World War II. And I hope we'll have a lot of fun with it. 
Same time. We always have a lot of fun with you, Ron, and we're thrilled to have you back um, offering these two courses. And we, uh, you know, we get a lot of feedback about how incredibly prepared you are and how much knowledge you share with um, everyone in a way that's you, um, like with the specifically with your courses that relate to the earth and physics that you demystify complicated scientific um, uh, concepts in a way that people can understand and that make learning fun. So we're really looking forward to both of your courses. One of your first course starts this Friday, the one on how the earth works. Um, so if you're not signed up, you'd want to sign up right away so you can get your spot in his uh, course that starts Friday and then look forward to the National Park course later in the semester. Thank you so much, Ron. Oh, I realized I, oh, I have Ron twice in this list. Okay, we're doing okay. All right, up I next. That. <laughs> I know. Up next, we have Sandra Mondikowski temple Thank you, Sandra. Gra glad to see you. Hi there, everybody. I'm Sandra Mondikowski temple um, I am an instructor at Boston University's Metropolitan College for the um, prison program, prison education program. Um, I've also taught at Plymouth County uh, House of Correction, um, and years ago I taught um, selected courses in American history at Wheelock College when it was still an independent college. Um, I will be teaching my fourth course for the, um, for the senior college, and that is going to be Law and Order, the North American West. Um, we'll explore problems in, in maintaining and establishing law and order, including geographic, social, and economic factors, as well as the so-called Code of the West um, and the idea of frontier justice. Um, we'll take a look at vigilantes, um, the range wars for land and water. Um, week two, we'll look at the buccaneers of the territories and the James Gang versus the Pinkerton Detectives. Week three, the ones who wore the badge, the Masterson Brothers and the Earp Brothers. Um, week four, the Texas Rangers. To be a Texas Ranger, a man had to, quote, ride like a Mexican, shoot like a Kentuckian, and fight like the devil. Week five, we'll take a look at the Canadian Mounties in 1873. The Canadian government established the first 300 troops of mounted police to deal with quote unquote American rogues, restive Indians, and struggling settlers in the Canadian Central Plains. Week six, the lawyers and the judges. Um, law some lawyers in particular, and the two most famous judges, Isaac Charles Parker, the hanging judge, and Judge Roy Bean, the Solomon of the Southwest. Uh, lectures will be accompanied by slides, followed by questions and answers in a facilitated discussion format. Um, I also send out materials after every class is over, and I take questions via email and then send folks um, answers. Uh, the, one of the most fun things for me about teaching at the senior college is all the things I have had to research as I've actually gone along with the class because of the questions people ask me. So that's always a lot of fun and I always do, those of you who are in my class know that I always do respond. Uh, the class will start on Mondays, April 4th at noon and last for six weeks. And I look forward to seeing a number of you there. Thank you so much, Sandra. We're so excited to have you back. Um, appreciate everything and all the effort that you do for Senior College. You are definitely one of our most uh, popular, steadfast, and um, great participants of uh, being a person who delivers courses that are of great interest to our members. So thank you. Um, OK, last but certainly not least, we have our friend Andrea Plate. Andrea? Pretty sure I pronounced your last name right. Did I Sorry. pronounce your last name right? Andrew? No. No. Tell me again. But, but it's different than you did last time. The last time I said plate. So I don't understand how someone has a last name with like four letters or and I five <laughs> letters and I can't pronounce it. I'm so sorry. Please tell it's us. It's quite all right. It's it's um plat. It spelt like plate, but it's pronounced plat. However, my my husband does have in his history plate 
So I'm, but I'm not going to talk about that. In fact, instead, I'm going to talk about my class, which after all the um, very heavy things that you've heard about in, um, uh, I came on in the middle, but um, uh, my class, I hope is just joy. Um, I teach origami. And um, for this, uh, this is, I think, my third or fourth cl class with the senior college. And um, uh, this, this upcoming class is focused on making stars, which may not sound like a big deal, but it has wide variety, an infinite number of models, and is totally appropriate for someone who has never folded a single origami anything or someone who has been practicing for a while. Um, I love teaching origami because I love that moment when somebody suddenly says, wow, because they did something or some move excited them or they couldn't believe that they could ever make this model. It's good, particularly in, in our age range, to be trying new things, to ask your brain to think differently, um, to problem solve. And, um, you know, I, I hope you'll give this some thought, this class, because people really have a lot of fun. The best way to sell you on the class is to show you some things. So these are things that we might make. Now I'm going to match the models to the ability levels of the class. So it does. This doesn't mean we'll do these particular models, but we have this one. Here's a very different star. Here's another. More. I pulled out a whole lot of possible stars we could make, um, depending on the group. Okay, some stars are made from multiple pieces of paper. Some stars are made from one piece of paper. Okay, this is one I just learned this past weekend when I was in an, um, an origami conference for, um, out of Israel. And this one, which I love. Um, learning the skills leads you to being able to do more and more and more. This, we will not be doing this star, but this is one piece of paper, okay? And um, through learning, um, ultimately, you could build to something like that. I love having a series of stars always available because I never have bows and ribbons um, or I want to put something on the front of a card or, or something. It's just a really fun, healthful, enjoyable. We create a community through, um, through Zoom. I, I strongly believe that. And I hope you'll consider taking the class. And it starts February 17th at 10.30 in the morning. Thank you so much, Andrea. The, the one thing that um, I appreciate so much, well, there's many things I appreciate you as an instructor, but I mean, we were able to see just now how you use technology so seamlessly. So you might think that you can't learn a hands-on like craft or art, art via Zoom, but you, you know, all of us just saw how you toggle between your face and the overhead camera so easy. And um, I know that people who, you know, took your class when were maybe a little apprehensive about learning uh, this on Zoom, they were able to do it. And I saw many people, you know, they would jump ahead and be so excited to do the thing. They would do the thing before next week. I think I saw Evelyn Del Delutis do that once and that just cracked me up. The other piece is, is that there are some supplies that you should get if you're taking Andrea's class and they're actually listed in our course catalog on page 
seven. Um, so go ahead and, um, you know, the course catalog is now in the chat here. So make sure you click that or you can get it on our website or you probably have it 50 times in your email from me. So again, that's on page seven. Um, she has all the uh, supplies you need for the class. They're not a lot and they're not expensive at all. They're mostly things you have already at home. Um, but take a look at that. So you want to order them, you know, if you're doing from Amazon or going out to a local crafts craft store you'd want to get them sooner rather than later go ahead andrea i was just going to say a couple of people um apparently have been were in my last class or one of my classes in their chat they're posting on chat and thank Aww. you i'm really pleased i love that love that testimonials we didn't even pay anyone to say anything and they're just <laughs> saying it it's awesome thank you so much okay i believe i have um i've covered every instructor that's here if there's any instructors that i missed jump in right now. Um, and okay, so we have it's two o'clock, I realize we're at the end time, we'll give it like, you know, instructors, again, you're welcome to leave. Um, I understand you're busy. But if anyone has any quick questions for instructors that are still here in the zoom, go ahead and unmute yourselves and ask those questions now. So again, questions for instructors that are still here in the zoom. And if not, we can just open it up to a general questions and let those instructors go. If there's no questions, we can certainly can go ahead and uh, Ginny, go ahead. And Rick, Ginny and Rick. <laughs> yeah, I know I forgot to put his name on there. Um, we want to attend the Nan Loggins class tomorrow. We haven't registered yet. Is it, can we do it and still make the class? Yep, so you, as the way we've set it up this semester is you, every member of the senior college has all the Zoom links for every single class. So you have at your fingertips in your email box, um, all the Zoom links. So whether you've signed up or not, you can go ahead and go to the class. I would encourage you to formally sign up via that form. So that way you can get on her email list. So if she's emailing out any material, some instructors email you, every week, some don't email you at all, but I always, always encourage you to sign up formally so that you can be on the potential email list. But again, you can go to any class, you have the Zoom links, you can just pop in as you'd like to. No, I mean, is it still a two-step process that we have to um, sign up and then wait? Did, for you, if, did you already pay your registration fee? No. no, yeah, so all you have to do is go on to do step two, which is on our website, is just to pay your fee because you were a member of this past fall. And then so we'll sorry. get the links. Yeah, then you'll get the links. Sorry, I misunderstood. I thought I assumed you had already signed up. Yep, you'll get the links for all the classes. Yep, good Okay, question. great, thank you. Thank you. Jennifer? Yes, go ahead. I always get mixed up with my emails. Um, so how am I going to get onto my class tomorrow? Which email do I go to? So you go to the email that you received right when you registered. It's from BSU Senior College, and it came with Darlene's name at the bottom. Uh huh. And it, she should have received like your one big email that has a bunch of attachments. It has the Zoom links, all that fun stuff. If you need it again, just shoot me an email and we can send it to you again. Okay. It's important that you keep that email. It has like all the important things. Uh, maybe if there's a way for you to save it or pin it to the top of your email box or, or whatever. Um, but I'm happy to resend it, Cornelia, if you need it. Thank you. Welcome. Any other questions, comments? Okay, well, thank you so much. I hope to see you soon. Class is starting this week. If you haven't joined already, please join. And again, tell a friend, family member, tell your cousin in like Colorado or North Carolina. It's mostly on Zoom. It's so worth the money. So tell those like distant friends, your college friend, your high school buddy, that lady you grew up with that lives up in New Hampshire now. Tell your friends. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks, instructors, for being here. Bye now.